Hello and welcome to the Care It Out Sleep Show, a podcast for tired parents who are searching for a bit more sleep the caring way. I'm your host, Kerry Secker, infant sleep consultant, founder of my unique sleep approach to Care It Out and your caring sleep supporter. I really hope you'll join me on my mission to get small to settle night's sleep without the tears, training or techniques. I love talking about sleep and I can't wait to share my sleep subjects with you. My approach to getting you more sleep is simple, straightforward, but above all, it's got to make sense and feel best for you. Ready to get more sleep? Then let's get started. Hello, and welcome to the Carrot Out Sleep Show. You're listening to Kerry Secker. I hope you're really well, and thank you so much for tuning in. I am recording this on the last day before we go into lockdown, and I have to say, I'm usually a very, very positive person if you've been tuning in for a while you probably you can probably see this but I'm going to be honest with you as I always am I really don't know um how I feel about it at the moment to be honest I don't know what the next four weeks are going to look like what Christmas is going to look like and like so many of us listening in I'm finding that uncertainty very sure uh, though that's uncertainty very unsettling not very sure um so today I did want to do a podcast about lockdown um specifically sleep on lockdown and i i haven't planned this i've literally done it off um i had something else planned um for next week but i really wanted to address this and i put it out on instagram and facebook um to see if you'd find this helpful and the podcast poll (laughs) was that, that you would find this helpful you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm doing this completely ad hoc. I haven't planned anything, but I really hope you find it useful. And before we start, I really don't want this to be turning in to uh, this is what you should do in lockdown. Because what I like to think about, lock- or what I've been saying about lockdown, is that we are all in the same ship. No, we are all in the same storm. So the storm, the shiz storm, is COVID lockdown. So we're all experiencing that, but we're all in different boats. And what I mean by that same storm covid different boat it feels different for all of us and there really is no right or wrong way you should feel and no right or wrong way that you should be spending the lockdown um i think that's really really important i'd never ever assume to presume how you were feeling about it because quite frankly and honestly i don't know how i'm feeling about it but that's very presumptuous and there really is no right or wrong way I know that I've got some friends that are really quite looking forward to lockdown. They're going to have some family time together. They're going to use that time and make the most of it where some are are really, really dreading it, being in, being at home by themselves. Um, we, we all are going to experience lockdown differently. So I really don't want this to just add to the pressure and that conversation that there's a right way to do lockdown because Again, if you've been following me for a while, you know, I don't, I really dislike all that blame, shame, this is what you should be doing. It's more that I just want it a little bit, something that's going to help you. Um, And I cannot, um, and I've said it a couple of times now, but there really is no right or wrong way to feel about lockdown or there's no right or way that your lockdown should look, if that makes sense. So I'm going to crack on. The first thing I wanted to go through with you is that it is a period of adjustment change is strange if you've listened to me for a while you've probably heard that a lot and it is strange quite again it's going to look different to everybody but some of you might have um um other parents working at home more people in the house that uncertainty that stress stress that anxiety um it is different and not going out so you're not going about your daily routines and your daily lives and classes and what you would normally do and that is a period of adjustment change is change and because it's a period of adjustment and a bit of change um how we deal with change some babies and some adults are they just roll with it they're quite they're not like change at first but it doesn't mean that they don't find it hard but they're quite they roll with the changes where some babies and some adults find change incredibly difficult and there can often be a conflict there if how one family member deals with change differently to the other um but yeah I just want to let you know that it is a period of adjustment it's likely to have an impact on everything how how you're feeling your mental well-being sleep family dynamics meal like literally everything um and if sleep does come off track 
um, this is completely normal. For some of you, um, your sleep won't take a hit. It will just stay, sleep will stay the same. It won't hit the skids. Where for some of you, um, the sleep might take a bit of a skid, bit of a bit of a bed blip. And again, there's no right or wrong. And it's natural to worry. And especially when you've got everything else to worry about that, oh my goodness, this is it. This is going to be like this forever. It's never, ever going to get back on track. But chances are, when everything else gets back to our new sense of normality, chances are sleep will settle back down again. Um, so my biggest tip um, around sleep, really, like general sleep tip around lockdown, is accept that I'm always uh, encouraging you to accept lots of things if we can. But acceptance can be really helpful. Surrendering, accepting, accepting that it's a period of adjustment, accepting that it's a change. This change may or may not impact their sleep. If it doesn't, great, we can crack on. But if it does, try to keep calm. Try to remember that it won't be forever. And try to keep telling yourself they're having a hard time, um, not giving you a hard time. It's completely normal. And hopefully I'm going to go through some things that are going to be really helpful for you now. But that's the first thing I just wanted to talk to you about. It is a period of adjustment. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is that babies, small toddlers, infants, they are like sponges, emotional sponges, and they pick up really easily things that are going on. They might not be able to rationalise it. It might even be on a very subconscious level, but they definitely pick up on these things. I've been a nanny for 20 years. Quite often they would know things about stuff about me personally that I wouldn't even know. Um, but they would know before me it's it's very odd. Um, but actually when I think about it and rationalise it, it isn't odd. It's just they see things, everything they pick up on our body language, our tone of voice, they're 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 forever watching. And it is completely normal that we are going to be all of the feelings in lockdown stressed, angry, ratty, all of the feelings here are very valid. I'm here for all of the feelings, <coughs> excuse me, um, but the little ones can really pick up on this and that can impact their behaviour, um, that can impact their sleep, their eating and everything is linked for your small. So feeding, um, diet, going to the toilet, pooping, sleep, behaviour, you might have noticed if one of those gets um knocked out it has a knock-on impact of everything else so we can't help how we feel and I think it's really important for children to experience a range of emotions from us we can't always be happy and positive all the time it's impossible um, and I'm just that is one thing I've really learned this year but that is a whole other podcast so just it's just something to bear on to bear in mind that if you do if you are seeing a difference in their behavior or their sleep then it may be that they're picking up on um, that subconscious level of things that are going on for you. They're picking up on our stress, our anxiety, what's going on for us. And especially with sleep, sleep is about being, yes, it is a, it is a biological process and it is about going to sleep. But a lot of sleep is also about having that connection with you and that calm. And I know myself that when I've been going through things, because that is life, other things that aren't related to my job, working with children, that can have an impact. You can disconnect. You can feel a little bit distant, all completely normal. And it's completely normal that that has an impact on your little one. So just something to be aware of. And one thing that could be really useful, I'm going to spit it down and go through naps, bedtime um, and nighttime sleep in a second. But what could be really useful is um, just parking those feelings. It can be really difficult to put down your emotions because we can't pick and choose how we're feeling. It doesn't emotions don't work like that. But being for the naps and bedtime, if you can just have five or ten minutes together to to get calm, it's not about the environment being calm because that might be um, impossible with everybody at home. Um, but being you being as calm as possible, having some time to connect. Together, that can really really help them going down for their naps and them going down for their bedtime which I'm going to talk about more in a second. The other thing I just want to reassure you is that you don't need to entertain them all day and I think this can be really difficult there's so much expectation on us to um, entertain and be doing something stimulating and interest worthy or interest worthy all the freaking time of the day and this is exhausting going through lockdown going through covid going through whatever you want to call it whatever's going on for you in fact you could apply this to anything that's going on um 
we put so much pressure on ourselves to um, be perfect and and entertain them all day. But going through that, any of those things, it's already exhausting, already exhausting. And entertaining them all day or feeling that pressure, which again, it's completely normal to feel that pressure to give them the best lockdown, learn another language, get them to learn their alphabet, get them writing, to entertain them all day. Of course, we want to do these things. And part of it is because we want to entertain ourselves. And if you want to do arts, crafts all day, that's absolutely okay. But I also just want to give you permission that, not that you need my permission or anybody else's, but it's okay not to be entertaining them all day. You need to take some time for you. And actually, I think it's really important that babies and children get very, very overstimulated very, very quickly. And part of being of their development is having that time and space. Boredom is a good thing. We are so worried about getting our babies bored. It's, It's a really good thing. They start to get curious about the world around them when they've got a chance like if you put your baby down and you're constantly dangling a toy in front of their face which I've definitely done who hasn't we're constantly doing something with them or we're trying to navigate their play when they're when we're playing with them um we're not giving them that chance to go oh I wonder what that's over there and start getting curious about the things that are directly in front of them and for old ones using their imagination. Yeah, I just want to reassure you and give you, uh, not that you need it, permission that you don't need to be entertaining them all day. I, again, um, I've never experienced lockdown with children, but I've been in with children that were very poorly and that day can really, really stress her out, can't it? So you want to fill it because you want to do things for you as well and that's okay. But I do think it is finding balance within there, doing one thing, having a bit of downtime, then doing something else. And actually, some of you might, and I'm definitely going to do this for myself. My husband thinks I'm nuts doing this, but I am going to have a little routine and a little second schedule for me at home and at work just to, I don't know, staring into a blank day with not when you can't leave the house or there's no routine of going out can be very tricky. So I'm definitely going to have a little. Um, have a look at my schedule and make a little plan there so hopefully that's helpful. right on to sleep so I'm going to start with um I'm actually going to stick to my four sleep steps um formula because not that it's a formula because sleep isn't an algorithm but actually it will help it that's a really good basis so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk through what you can do to help naps and bedtime what you can do to help your bedtime boundary and what we can do to help at night time. And then I've got a couple of other little things to finish off with. So let's start with naps. So it is, I think the biggest thing that's going to be going on for naps in lockdown is one, if you actually, there's quite a few, one, if your baby is used to going out and about and snoozing on the move they might be having to nap at home so that's one thing the other thing is that there's going to be lots of family members or the house might be a little bit busier than it normally would which were really alert energetic bubs they're going to find it very difficult um, to take a nap and the other thing is that if they are um, during the day we don't nap um, during the day their sleep hormone melatonin levels actually undetectable so we don't during the day we don't really use melatonin in our system to get us off to sleep we sleep during the day because we've had enough um, wake time or nap gap to get to sleep and we've had enough physical activity to get us to sleep as well we've built up enough peak pressure so it makes sense because everything is linked for, for little ones that if we aren't doing our usual routine we're not exercising as much we're not getting the I know we are we'll be allowed out and we'll be able to walk I think lockdown this time will look very differently from the first lockdown um but they might not be doing their normal um physical and mental stimulation as well which can have an impact on naps um and they might not be ready for naps um at, the, at their usual times I think the biggest thing I want to share with you is that you just I hate that word you've just got to but again it's not only about what you should do but just rolling with it, I think, is going to be really helpful. And it's so hard to let go of that nap routine and nap time. But to some degree, we've got no, not, we haven't got any control over that. So my suggestion would be to try and stick to your school's normal nap routine where you can. And if they are sticking with that, amazing. 
But if they're not, have a think about um, the things that we've just gone through. One, if it is um, they're finding it tricky to nap out in the house, are there things that you can bring indoors to help the nap happen a little bit easier? Could they nap in a garden? Could they have their hat and coat on? Could they nap in a buggy indoors? If it is really noisy in the house, and again, um, it's a privilege to have a house with space and to find a calmer place to nap, but if you can, could they nap wrapped up in the garden where it's calm and quiet? And you can, safety of course, you can watch them. Um, it, can you take them somewhere in a different room, calm and quiet for a nap? Um, could you put white noise on? That can help massively as well. And the last thing for naps is if they aren't ready to nap at their normal time, because um, as I said, I would try and stick to their normal nap gaps if you can. But if you find that that's not working for them, they're not ready down for that, they're not ready for the naps because of melatonin, they haven't got up enough peak pressure. My suggestion would be to try for 10, 15 minutes. But if they're really not going down after that time, I would take a break because there is nothing. I've been there worse than trying to get your baby down for a nap when you're in the house. It can feel really, really it can feel really um, claustrophobic to so take time if they're not down within 10-15 minutes I'd have a break come out do something else in the house and then um, try it again and sometimes just nudging out those nap gaps that can help massively to get them down for a nap and the other thing I'd like to say about the naps as well is try not to put so much pressure on that they've got to happen in a certain way for example for a certain length with a certain parent in a certain place I think um, a pandemic a lockdown it's always okay to roll with that routine and it's so hard not to think oh my goodness I'm going to be I'm doing everything um, we're going to lose all the progress um, we are giving in all of these um, negative connotations often come up but especially on my approach I can't talk about anybody else's approach but on my approach this ain't no sleep training and it, it I this is just the nature of working with families and young babies and children is that things change um it's sleep isn't a straight line and it does wiggle around a little bit comes back to that period of adjustment the second thing I want to talk about as well while we're talking about naps is bedtime. So it's the same thing with naps. I would try and stick to your small normal bedtime if you can. It's always worth trying that first because some babies will, and smalls will really, really appreciate that. They just thrive and they appreciate and they love that consistency. And for some, it won't have an impact on how tired they are. But if you do try normal bedtime and they are simply not tired, they're raring to go. This is more for older ones as well, where they're just not getting rid of their energy during the day that they normally would by being out and about. It's always OK to surrender to a later bedtime. You are going to worry. Of course, you're going to worry that they're going to get overtired. The bedtime's always going to take this long, that you're never going to have an evening back. These are all completely normal worries and concerns to have. But chances are that, is, that it's not certain that that's going to happen indefinitely. And for the time being, it's always OK to roll with their bedtime. Um, and it might be where, again, I would try their normal bedtime. But if they're not down within 15, 20 minutes, it's becoming forceful. It's becoming frustrating. I would take a bit of a break, go back to it 10, 15 minutes later or, or whatever time frame you want to put on it. Um, until they go to bed and again same thing with naps it's try to just do things that are just that are going to take that peak pressure off of you if they're really fighting take that path of least resistance at that time and it's okay for a couple of couple of weeks however long we're going to be doing it for to sleep you know go to sleep in a different room I think you have to really prioritize but I'm going to come on to this in a second what's essential here and the most essential thing is that they're going down to bedtime um and or they're going to sleep and what that looks like or where that is that's secondary and it's always okay to um do what makes things easy and take that path of least resistance for a little bit I think that's really important and the other thing that stems in from bedtime I, I feel like I've done this the the other way around would be bedtime routine again um I would try and stick to your normal bedtime routine where you can um if you are just be aware that if you are finding it very difficult and I think many of us are going to are going to be feeling like you're stressed anxious about it 
um, you'll find things that particularly difficult being in and who wouldn't something to bear in mind at bedtime is to just making sure you're really having the environment might not be calm but try to make yourself as calm as possible I know theory is so much easier than putting into practice and also having that that connected time together before bedtime routine that can really help bedtime routine is preparation for separation um, and we often forget that going to sleep is a period of separation away from you, even if it's for a short amount of time, right, until the next wake up. And in order to separate from you, they do, calmness is really important. Um, and again, I can't stress this enough, it isn't always about the calm, um, them, your baby or your small being calm, because they could be you know, some babies don't get calm at bedtime. They literally go, 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 then fall asleep, where some do get calmer and calmer and then and then start drifting off. They're all really, really different. But that can help um, massive as well, just knowing that. Um, but when I'm talking about calm, it's trying to make the environment as calm as possible. And I know that's really difficult with more people in the house, stress in the house, all of these things. But just we just have to do what we can. I think that's the real takeaway mes- message of this podcast. And also about being calm ourselves. That's one thing, calm at bedtime. And the other is connected connection and feeling connected to you. The more connected they feel to you, or I call it anchored, the more likely they are to be able to do their bedtime routine settle down to sleep and they're able to manage that separation from you for a short time having that time even if it's just for five or ten minutes where we put down whatever we're well, we're holding on to that day our phones that emotion for us that anxiety try to put it down for five or ten minutes spend that time together and sometimes that can become a really nice part of your bedtime routine together that can help massively as well and as I said before if you are doing your bedtime routine and your little ones, especially toddlers, they are, you know, they are as high as a kite and finding it very difficult to calm down. It's okay to shift your bedtime routine a little bit, so maybe push it a bit later or do things in a slightly different order for now. It's always okay to roll with your routine. So the, I, think I, can't, I don't even know what number we're on now, but the next thing I want to talk to you about is bedtime boundary. So bedtime boundary is simply how your small goes to sleep. Um, some examples of the common bedtime boundaries that I see are rocking, feeding, bouncing, sitting with them, staying in the room until they go to sleep. That's a bedtime boundary, how they go to sleep. And bedtime boundaries with me, there's no right or wrong, it's just whether they're working. Um, and it's probably, lots of you will probably feel that it's a really good time to work on sleep. And actually, if your little one is, you know, they're not finding it, you know particularly stressful they're actually still very much on their not on a sleep schedule but they are on track and on their sleep schedule there's absolutely no reason why you can't work on sleep during lockdown because it that could be really helpful for a family it gives you focus something to work on gives you purpose actually that could keep you going but if you find your little one is really pushing the bedtime boundaries they're finding it very difficult to settle to sleep they're finding you might notice that they need more support this is okay just like us when we are going through something worrying about a pandemic worrying about being in lockdown trying to be perfect all the time um worrying about your business worrying about what we're doing am i eating the process all of these things and some of those are definitely what i've been worrying about recently um it's just like us it's going to have an impact on us falling asleep at bedtime and staying asleep i'm totally putting my hands up i'm a sleep consultant i know don't know it all because nobody does nobody has all the answers but i know a lot about sleep and my mine and my husband's sleep at the moment is terrible um i'm going to bed late i've got no bedtime routine i'm waking up really late and i don't feel great for it um but it's it's exactly the same my point was is that our smalls are very much like us and if they're going through something something there's a change there's a period of adjustment something in their household is happening they know something's happening but they might not be able to rationalize it or really comprehend what's going on that can impact how they're going to sleep at bedtime so my suggestion would be i don't know how your smalls are going down at bedtime because there's no right or wrong bedtime boundary as you know my suggestion again would be to try and stick with their usual bedtime boundary, their usual way of settling, and just see how you get on. And again, if they go for it, amazing. Um, 
And if they don't, they need a little bit more time or support. That's okay. When there is a change to the family dynamics, they know something's going on, but they can't rationalise it. You might find that they need a little bit more support at bedtime. They want to feel connected to you. They want to feel safe and settled. So it is completely normal that settling them to sleep might take a little bit longer. It takes time. And two, you might find that they need quite a bit more support to go down at bedtime. And it is always OK, pandemic or not, to always give them that time and support if they need it. My biggest sleep suggestion with for this would be to it's always okay to give them that time if it is taking too long I would like more than 30 minutes 30 40 minutes I probably would take them out of bed and, and try again in a bit um I probably wouldn't push it um but again you're always your baby's expert or your small's expert if you're in the room and you can see that they are really clearly tired they're just having trouble then I would probably try give it a little bit longer if you can see that they are literally wired high as a kite and sleep is not on the cards anytime soon I would take a bed break and come back to it. Don't make it forceful um, or frustrating for, for either of you. And the other thing is that um, if they do need a little bit more support, they might need you back in the room. They might, might need a little bit more hand holding. They might need a bit more of a cuddle, a bit more rocking. My suggestion would be it's always okay to give them this. I would never withhold the rocking, the feeding, the bouncing, the hand holding if that's what they needed in that moment. If there's an emotional need there, they're crying, they're emotionally uneasy, I'd always meet that need. But I would try, especially if they are used to doing a little bit more work themselves, putting themselves to sleep at bedtime, I would try to do that until they're almost asleep, but then stop. I'd always try and maintain um, your small doing that last little bit of putting themselves to sleep if you can and it's the same with for older ones who you might have already got to that point where they go in their beds you sit there for a bit or leave the room straight away and they're putting themselves to sleep you might find yourself in a position where all of a sudden they want more support they want you back in the room um, especially in a situation like this I would always um, be open and offer up that reassurance being think being a most really tiring and tough for you but being emotionally and physically available to your child to your baby small I'm just going to use the word small um can really help at that time um and at any time but you know pandemic or not like this, you can find like this. Um, and if you do find that they're asking you to come back in I would but again I would try and leave just before they fall asleep and if you find your, yourself where they are just doing what they normally would do that's fine it comes back to you there's no right or wrong way how your small should feel in lockdown what they should do in lockdown either or how you deal with it I think that's really important and then the last one um is uh what we're doing at night time so again some of your smalls you might not see any difference to how they sleep at all wherever they are now they'll just continue to do that in lockdown and that's brilliant could go with it however for some smalls the change to because again it comes back to everything linked the change to what's going on during the day that can then have an impact on night time as well so with their nighttime sleep it's pretty much the same thing for each sleep step we've just gone through recognize and acknowledge that it is a period of adjustment if they are the naps are a little bit off track during the day they're not as they're not running off as much energy during the day that can have an impact at night time and it's easy to panic and think oh my goodness sleep is hitting the skids we're undoing everything it's that they're losing the ability to sleep we don't know that for certain um and like most things with the small um it is it, things are phases so it is really hard. I know it's really hard. And I know I make it sound really easy, but try to keep calm and just remind yourself that it won't be forever. We will get through this. We have to get through it. Um, and if you, it is normal for them to be a little bit more um, unsettled at night time. It really does depend on how unsettled they are. My suggestion would be to just accept that there might be a little bit of a knock on effect. And in that period of adjustment, remind yourself that it won't last forever. However, if they if they're really, really unsettled at night time, again, I think I would come back to try to um, give them the two main important things at night time is that we're always giving them the practice and patience to stitch their sleep cycle together. Um, but we're also meeting their needs. So one thing that I would say is give them a little bit more time. If they wake up and they're not crying, they're emotionally easy. 
I would try. It's not about it's not ignoring them. It's not leaving them. It's about respecting the space that they're asking for. If they are asking for support, I'd go in, roll up your response, try and get them resettled. And if it really isn't happening, like sleep is just a shiz show, it's not working. Just a reminder that it's always okay to ask to take that path of least resistance um so many parents tell me that they feel like they're just giving in they're being lazy they're guilty of co bed sharing co-sleeping staying in the room with them taking doing what they need to do in order to get everybody back to sleep i think that's okay regardless of what what's going on but in a pandemic and a lockdown um i think it's even more important it's always okay to take the path of least resistance at, at, at night time and especially with the night because for naps at time, at time, routine, at time boundaries to some degree that can have a real difference and um, the more we do that that can then um, have a knock-on impact for the night time and it can improve the nights but once you've got to the night time and they're waking frequently they are they're unsettled they need you um they can't get back to sleep. That's it. There's very little you can do at night time once they've got to that point. If that makes sense, there. If they're unsettled, they're awake. They're waking frequently. 100%. They're causing you an unsettled night's sleep. They're causing um, tiredness for you and them. But it's not the cause of their wake up. So my suggestion would be to always work on the, my whole approach is set up to change the cycles during the day from these three steps. That's Naps in bedtime, bedtime routine, bedtime boundaries. Concentrate, prioritise those first because they have the greatest impact at night time. And my whole approach is setting up those sleep cycles so at night time they're able to wake up, check in with themselves and stitch their sleep cycles together. So if you find that they're waking, I hope this is making sense, if you find that they're waking up frequently and they can't get back to sleep, they need you, it is because it's almost too late at that point. That's a simple something that's going on in the setup. So that's why it's I really does I really do hope that makes sense. I feel like I've floundered there a little bit. But the wake ups at night time causing you a sleepless night, but they're not the cause of theirs. So at night time, yes, the three things that are really important. One, we want to try and give them their sleep space to stitch the sleep cycle. If they're not crying emotionally uneasy, they're they're awake but they're happy. If they're asking for support, I'd always, crying, emotionally easy, I'd always recommend reassuring them, going in, trying to get them calm, trying to get them back into their cot or bed. But if that really isn't working, then it's always okay to take that path of least resistance. It's not lazy, it's not giving in. I think it's smart getting everybody back to sleep as quickly as possible because what you're doing at night time isn't going to get them back to sleep any quicker than it comes before that. So I hope that makes sense. And then the two last things I want to talk to you about. Now, these aren't mine. I read these in a book, um, a business book or like a self-help book. But they have really, really helped me. And the two questions that when you are going through lockdown, to always ask yourself is one, what is essential here? What is essential? Is it that they get to they go down for a nap? Is it that they um, get down to sleep? just pick what is essential whether we're well, just making it through the day that is going to be my base that's my baseline every day any day every day what my essential is have I made it through the day we haven't lost anybody it's a good day um and I think going into lockdown that's also a really nice baseline to have but you could also extend that a little bit what is essential here what is essential they get a nap sometime during the day what isn't essential where that nap happens how long that nap is who put them down for a nap um what is essential for watching tv for example screen time um what is essential here we all get a rest and have a little bit of tv it's, it's definitely all about balance always ask yourself what is essential here and the other thing is is how can um i make it easier um some examples here um, I guess if they, it's about picking uh, that trade off, and parenting isn't about battling unless we make it. It's not about battles for me, but it, for picking your battles, if they um, want to sleep somewhere else and that's okay with you, how can we make it easier? Takeaway, cooking food, um, not entertaining them all day, just little things that can just keep asking so how can I make it easier and just remember that making it easier and taking that path of least resistance it isn't isn't lazy it is very very smart my role as a sleep consultant with whatever I'm putting out there it is 
always, always, how can I get you, a family, to where you want to be with the minimum amount of work? And what can I do to make that easier for you? So there's two questions again. What is essential here? What really, really matters? What is, what's essential? Is it that they have a nap? They go to bed? Um, it doesn't really matter for now what time it is where the nap's happening how they get to sleep and um, how can I make it easier for myself what are the things that you can are there any battles that you can put down anything that you can take off your plate to make it a little bit easier not lazy just more wow I literally can't believe that I have been talking for 34 minutes I didn't plan any of that I wrote one two three four words on my page which were naps bedtime essential easier and I've managed to do that that is pretty good going I'm pleased with that I really really hope you found that this podcast useful please do let me know um, any feedback from you I love knowing that love hearing that you love listening and I love knowing whether you found it helpful or not please let me know really hope um lockdown is okay for you um remember there's no right or wrong way to feel there's no right or wrong way to do with lockdown it's going to look different for us all same storm different ship um and i will be i don't know what's going to happen in the future for me carry it out personally and professionally no idea but i have decided that i'm just going to keep showing up keep smiling and do what I do. And I've got lots of free resources planned for um, the lockdown as well. So I'm sending you all big love and sleep solidarity and I will speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to me, your host, Kerry Secker on the Carrot Out Sleep Show. I really hope you found the podcast reassuring, informative and a little bit fun. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the show below. And I'd be so grateful if you could leave me some fabulous feedback. I always love hearing from you and one lucky listener will win lifetime access to my Bedtime Basics e-course every single month. My next podcast episode will be out in two weeks time but if you can't wait for more of my sleep shizzle you can find me over on Instagram at Carrot Out Sleep Consultant. I update my sleep squares and speak sleep there on the daily. Big love and sleep solidarity to you all.